Hey guys, my name's Chuck. This is Church at Home. We're about to have an episode of The Loop Show. Let's get it started with a little bit of worship. I love praise and worship. When I think about a perfect God who chooses to show grace to broken people like me, and then that same God uses us to do amazing things on His behalf, I have to worship Him. It's my best way to say thank you to an incredible God. So let's get crazy, let's get excited, and let's praise God. It's moving close, now I see Erase the scales from my eyes Then play the scale of my life Chaos played off with a chord and a chord With a source preventing through strife and I've tasted suffering, I've been embraced By the painful buffering, I've been bound by doubt So loud right now, but a melody is made When you play these rusty keys So we all gotta get pressed Tuned up like instruments, but I know All of life's tempo is set Whenever we remember this in the madness, there's peace Drowning out the voice all around me through all of this chaos You were writing a symphony, a symphony And even in the madness there is peace Drowning out the voices All around me through all of this chaos You were writing a symphony, a symphony 
the test on walls And every enemy will fall So we will stand and we will fight That every wrong will be made right Cause there is power in this room Come on, we give it praise yeah. Where the Spirit worship with you guys. We just sang some of my favorite worship songs of all time. Do you have a favorite worship song? If you do, let me know in the comments below. Hey, are you watching right now with a family member? If not, go grab them and bring them in here and watch with you. The loop is so much better together. In fact, I've got a question for everybody that's watching right now. Okay, you ready? How long do you think it would take for you to learn to write your name using only your feet. That's pretty crazy, right? That would be quite a challenge. I mean, would you try and like put the pin between your toes or would you like try to try to write your name like in sand, like on the beach or something? If you think that sounded tough, Ricky and Jamie are about to try something in this episode called the Chopstick Drawing Challenge. Let's check it out. This week on The Loop Show Likes You. Ballet, chopsticks, and enemies. Hang, Hang on, on for, for the, the loop! loop. Four, three, two, one. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie, and you're you. Welcome to the Loop Show Likes You. <laughs> I love when we do the Loop Show Likes You, or as the cool kids call it, L-S-L-Y. We take your postcards and make a whole show out of it. That's right, we like to get to know you better. So let's dive right in and see what you said you wanted us to know. Okay, Kaden wanted us to know, I love to do karate and hip hop ballet. That's amazing. Now, just a clarifying question. Are you talking about you like to do karate, comma, hip hop, comma, and ballet? Or is this some kind of mega class of karate, hip hop, ballet? Because if it is, that's amazing, and you sound like a modern day superhero. I love ballet, I've never tried karate, and I'm not good at hip hop. I like karate, uh, and I am not uh, nimble enough to be uh, in ballet. I've tried and failed several times. Oh, at least you tried. Yeah, and failed. <laughs> Madison said, I usually like to act like a fox. Ow, ow, ow! That's 
that's probably closer. Yeah, that's how I imagine. That's a fox, fox you should stay away from, actually. <laughs> that's, what, that's why I assume that foxes are like, they're just very close in. They're like <laughs> just furry velociraptors. <laughs> that's, that is kind of what that seems like. <laughs> okay, so uh, someone wrote in that they are cranky. This says, I'm oh. cranky. Well, let's take a deep breath and roll this clip. Question. Is it a sin to get emotional? Answer. Eyewitnesses tell us that Jesus cried. They tell us he got angry. He was fully human and he felt the emotions that we feel. He felt angry and sad and frustrated and happy and everything you felt. Jesus lived a perfect life. Feeling emotions and expressing them is not a sin. Feeling emotions is part of God's design for you. I love the fact that Jesus shows so much emotion. It, it reminds me that I truly was made in His image, especially when I show emotion in my life. There's a cool story in the Bible where Jesus was walking up to the temple, and when He got there, He found people selling doves and cattle and exchanging money, and they were using the temple, God's house, as a place of business. And this made Jesus really angry. And so we can see in John chapter two how He responds. It says, Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased them all out of the temple. He drove out the sheep and cattle, scattered the money changers' coins all over the floor, and turned over their tables. Then going over to the people who sold the doves, he told them, get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. Man, Jesus was showing raw emotion. He was, he was angry to see someone doing what he believed was disrespecting God. And so it's important for us to know, emotion isn't bad. Emotion is actually just a signal. And we have to make sure that our emotions don't control us, but we control them. But we also have to make sure that we use them as a signal to know something needs our attention and something needs our prayer. 911 emergency services, what's your emergency? Any guy out here at the temple freaking out. He's flipping tables over, man. What's your location? Okay, I'm at the temple in Jerusalem. There's a lot of livestock out here. The pigeons are losing their minds. Why are there pigeons in a temple? I sell them. In a temple? Yeah, you can worship, and then on your way out, why not buy a pigeon? We got sheep and oxen, too. In a temple? You sound like the guy with the whip. Who has a whip? The guy flipping the tables. He made it from cords. Okay. Oh, man. oh my pigeons are loose. He opened up their baskets. Okay, stay calm. They have rings. They've taken flight, man. They're gone. My pigeons are I gone. I know pigeons have wings. Coins are scattered everywhere. This is pandemonium. Why are there coins? He said we're a den of thieves. I'm not a den of thieves. I know you're not a den of thieves. My pigeons are gone. I don't know what I'm going to do. Sir, please try to calm down. Calm back. Calm back to your cages, pigeons. Pigeons. Hello? Come back. Hello? Uh, sir? Sir? Well, I hope that helps, Cranky. So, should we spin the wheel of cards and choose our next challenge? Spin the wheel! There we go. That was a good spin. All right, here we go. Draw a dog using chopsticks. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Oh! Using oh, wow. chopsticks. I thought we needed to draw a dog that was using chopsticks. This, I see. This might be easier or harder. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Oh no, this is difficult. Okay, here we go. So far, so good. All right. Dog is a dog, and he has shape. Flappy. He is a much better drawer than I am, so I, I gotta try to make this work. Okay. How's it going for you? Oh, this dog looks like a, a normal dog, 100%. That's it? I don't oh, know. Oh, Ricky's such a good drawer. Okay, this it, it's basically, <laughs> my hands are like cramping. Oh no. Okay. Ah! Oh no, I lost my marker. Oh no, th oh, three seconds. Okay. Uh, okay, and then. Just so people know, it's a dog. I'm just gonna say dog. I'm still drawing. I'm just, guess, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just spelling the word dog very terribly. <laughs> oh. Okay. Put the caps on your marker. Oh. One, two, three. Do -do -do. Yay! Oh, I 
Oh, you guys are so great! Thanks. No, Jamie, you did amazing! It's not a whole body like you How yours. did you get such a smooth lines? This was so difficult. It I was really hard. I tried to use the thick end of the of these. Oh, and smart. Then hold it like that. Oh, well, that's brilliant. I was using them like I was ready to eat food. Uh, yeah. I was doing this, and this was just like wiggling. About. I didn't even try that. <laughs> oh, excellent technique. <laughs> Well, whoever sent us this challenge, thank you for sending it. Yeah, I've never drawn with chopsticks before, but now I feel like this is how I should draw everything from now on. <laughs> so, you know what time it is. We love your challenges, but we also like your big questions. Ooh. So, let's see what you're asking today. How do I deal with mean people and bullies? Hmm. It's a good question. Let's take a look. Hey, guys. I'm Jess. I just wanted to tell you a quick little story about me. So when I was in middle school, I was just the type of person who wanted to be friends with everybody. I wouldn't say I was super popular. I wouldn't say I was like the coolest kid on the block. But this one year, the really cool kids at school were wearing this super trendy style of jean, and I desperately wanted to be a part of that crowd. Okay, hear me out. I know that skinny jeans are the cool thing right now, but back in my day, wide legs were the jam, okay? I'm talking 16 inches around on the legs. They had huge pockets, high-waisted, really thick denim fabric. I know it sounds crazy, guys, but they were everything. Now, I know you're wondering, Jess, what do those look like? I just can't even picture. Don't you worry, I knew you were gonna ask that question. I printed a visual. Check those babies out. Do you see the pockets? Do you see the legs? These were so cool. I needed these jeans more than anything, guys. I thought that if I could get these jeans, wear them to school, all the kids that were cool would wanna be my friend. And I come from a family that's pretty frugal. We did not buy on brand clothing. It was always knockoffs. So trying to beg my mother to buy me brand label jeans, it took a lot of work. But that year for Christmas, she surprised me. Honestly, it was probably the best Christmas I ever had because I just knew I had an in. So that next week at school, I get dressed, I roll up into the building, I am feeling myself. I feel totally rad in these jeans. Guys, the minute I walked into school, my whole entire plan completely backfired. Those kids that I really wanted to be friends with, they laughed at me, they made fun of me. And to be really honest, those jeans are not my style. I would never wear those, but I just felt like the world was pressuring me into wearing these jeans so that I could be in and cool with this crowd. That was the very first and last time that I ever wore those jeans. This whole story has me thinking, how does Jesus want us to handle bullies? The law allowed for haters and hatred of your enemies. So if somebody was mean to you, you had every right to be mean right back to them. But Jesus wants you to love your enemies and to pray for them. This is unlike anything before. When I think back to that time, and I think about how I was called to love and pray for all of those friends who laughed at me and made fun of me in front of everybody, it's so hard to think about that. But it is written, you have heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Matthew 5, 43 and 44. So, did these jeans make me popular? <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. <sighs> that year though, guys, I saw God's word taking action in my own life and it was incredible. The world expected me to be mean right back to the people who made fun of me. But knowing Jesus, it changes everything. Is it easy all the time? No. But with Jesus, we can do anything. Important side note! Loving your enemies does not mean ignoring a bully. If someone is hurting you or others, tell someone. Get help from a trusted adult. Side note. It's hard to love your enemies. Thanks for sending us such great questions to chew on. Send us more questions and challenges and things we should know about you. Send us mail. <gasps> send us anything. Send us your grandma. Send us postcards. Send us skywriting. Get in an airplane. Get in a parachute. Have the message on the parachute. Have a second jumper jumping out of the airplane, filming the message on the top of the parachute, and then have that message sent to us. 
grandma could be the first jumper. She could be the one with the parachute on. Got it. Or she could be like um, like an extreme grandma. An extreme grandma. Extreme grandma. And she could be the one second with the video camera. This is how you hold video camera. It is. We love you guys. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride. I'm going to do everything with chopsticks now. That's great. Everything. Emotions. We all have them, but they're from God, which means he's given us what we need to control them. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much that you have given us emotions so that we could have a full and exciting life, God. And I also thank you that you've given us what we need to control them so that we can use them the right way. As we continue on praying with heads still bowed and eyes still closed, maybe here you're here right now and you think about the things you've done because of your emotions. Maybe it makes you sad. Maybe you regret some of the things you might have said or how you might have hurt people. And you don't think, you know, how could God ever love me? How could God ever forgive me? Well, I don't let you know right now is that because of Jesus, because He sent Jesus to die for you and for me, for all the things that we've done wrong, and it's through Jesus that we can use our emotions to love people well. And maybe you're here today and you recognize, I don't have a relationship with Jesus. I want that. I want to be forgiven. I want to give my life to Christ. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand right now. Hands up going all over. Well, right now we're going to pray with those who are making that decision today. So repeat after me. Say, Dear God, I recognize that I'm broken and I need a Savior. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died and rose again for me. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life, to make me brand new. Thank you for your forgiveness and thank you for your love. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. If that was you, that is the most important decision you can ever make. And know that we're celebrating with you but don't keep it to yourself. Tell somebody, tell an adult, tell your family about the decision you just made and know we're so proud of you. Hey, if you made that decision today, I just wanna tell you, congratulations! That is the most important and best decision that you will ever make in your entire life. What I want you to do right now, find a trusted adult, find a parent, a grandparent, a teacher, some adult that you trust and tell them, hey, today, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Another great next step that you can take is to start a YouVersion Bible plan. Open up your Bible app, type in Loop Show, and you're gonna find a ton of plans that are gonna be great to go through anytime. And finally, we've got some questions that you guys can talk through as a family. Those are gonna come on screen here in just a second.